Hey everyone, breastfeeding is the most important thing that you can do for your newborn. In this video, I'm going to show you how to breastfeed your newborn like a pro. Hey mamas, I'm Lacey, your lactation counselor, and I'm a mom of three kids. I know how hard it can be to figure out breastfeeding for the first time, but I'm here to help. I have tons of experience breastfeeding, years and years, and I know how hard it is, but I'm here for you to get on the right foot. So let's go into the 10 breastfeeding or 10 tips on breastfeeding your newborn. The first one is educate yourself before you deliver. That is a key. I kind of went into breastfeeding blind and I feel like you could avoid so many pitfalls if you just educate yourself beforehand. It is great to take a class. Um, you can take tons of breastfeeding classes from any lactation counselors. You can go to the hospital and a lot of times they offer that. Um, you can obviously take them online. I myself always, um, I do a boot camp for mamas that's really helpful and that will help boost your supply and have a great latch so you have a great um, breastfeeding relationship with your mom, with your baby. And um, you can also read lots of books. There are so many good books on there, out there that will teach you so much about breastfeeding. <clears throat> Um, the art, the womenly art of breastfeeding is a great one. And also Ina May makes a really awesome one about breastfeeding as well. Um, gosh, I wish I could remember the name. I'll have to look that one up for you guys. But, um, the author is Ina May. She has awesome, awesome books. Um, so make sure that you are just make it, taking the time to educate yourself and knowing what could happen, knowing what to expect, watching videos here on YouTube, these things really make a difference to make sure that you are prepared to breastfeed. The next thing I'm gonna share with you is share your intentions with the hospital. Um, a lot of hospitals are now called baby friendly where they um, will help initiate with breastfeeding and don't just assume that you're going to bottle feed or formula feed. So, but it is always good to share with the staff what your intentions are. So maybe they can already have a lactation consultant on staff ready for you when you get started. Um, it can feel a little daunting at first. So if you're in the hospital and they are there to help you and guide you, that is all the better, right? The third thing is be prepared for when you get home from the hospital or the birth center. So one thing I did not realize with my first is when your milk comes in, you will have, um, you'll start leaking anytime your baby is crying or um, even just hearing or seeing the baby can cause your milk to come in. So having breast pads on hand and having them is great, especially if you have a bunch of visitors in in your house trying to see the new baby. Um, I personally would not feel comfortable with having just a bunch of puddles on my shirt. So it would be great. It would definitely be important for you to have breast pads on hand. I would say you don't necessarily need any gear when it comes to breastfeeding, but some things are just nice to have. So I like to have breast pads and I love having a Haka. Haka is like a silicone manual pump and it just attaches to your breast. I love to use it on one side while I'm nursing the other. That way I get to collect the letdown on one side while I'm nursing the baby on the other. And that's just leaks that would go to waste otherwise. So that is one of my favorite tools to use when I am breastfeeding. Um, another thing that you might like to have on hand is ice packs and nipple creams. In the beginning, you can feel a little bit sore because you're obviously not used to breastfeeding so many hours a day. So if you are um, planning to exclusively breastfeed, or even if you're just trying to give it a shot, I would highly recommend at the very least ice packs because you are going to be dealing with engorgement and it might be a little bit painful at first. So having nipple creams are handy. Um, you can also use your breast milk to help with soreness, but nipple creams can be a little bit helpful for sure in the beginning. And also make sure that you have maybe like a, a log, some kind of breastfeeding tracking. Um, I offer one on my website you can always have, but it is just record the times that you're breastfeeding. How long are you breastfeeding? You know, knowledge is so much power, right? So if I know that I breastfed my baby two hours ago, 
and they're crying. And then I also look at yesterday at this time, they were also fussy at this time. Now I know, and I can expect it and I can plan better for the next day. Maybe not to have company over that time because this is the time my baby likes to cluster feed and eat a lot, right? So the next tip, this is tip number four is get help when you need it. So it is always important to meet with a lactation consultant right when you start breastfeeding. But if you are home afterwards and you are still thinking that you need some help, which a lot of us do, you know, we're not going to catch the problems the second they are, the second your baby is born. So if you are having problems, the sooner you reach out to someone, the better. So make sure you have somebody on hand, whether you are calling me, you are going to a support group. There's lots of breastfeeding support groups out there. I used to go to them quite often um, with the La Leche League. Um, or you can do like, I have a birth center that I used to always go to for breastfeeding support and also at the hospital. So there's so many options, but just making sure that you get help as soon as you need it, because the longer that you wait, the worse it can get. The fifth tip I have today is getting the baby latched. This is crucial. Like you can't breastfeed without the baby latched on. And if you have an incorrect latch, wow, you're going to be dealing with a lot of pain. It is, it can be really hard. So you never want to be the mama dealing with the clogged milk ducts or the cracked nipples. And you know, you're just bleeding and it's completely miserable. And a lot of this has to do with just having an improper latch. And that is something that can be easily avoided. So going over real quick on how you can have a good latch with your baby is first off, make sure you're catching your baby before they get hangry. So when you're logging, say like, okay, this is the time they like to eat. Or hey, it's already been three hours. I should probably wake them up to make sure that they're eating before they wake up and they get so hungry. So making sure that you're eating on a good time so they're not hangry. Then you're going to, when your baby is to you, you're going to hold your breast like a C shape or a U shape. This will compress your breast. So if you're eating like a sandwich and it's obviously much bigger than your mouth, this is kind of the same thing when you're breastfeeding because obviously, you know, after your milk comes in, you're like, okay, this is way bigger than my baby's mouth. So, um, Compress your breast, and that way, this will allow your baby to fit as much of the sandwich or your breast into their mouth. So this will help have a very deep latch, which is what you want. Once you compress your breast, you're going to brush it along their nose. This will say, oh, baby, oh, it's time to eat. I feel something near my face, and they will open up wide. Always make sure that you're allowing them to open up wide before you're sticking your boob in their face. That would be off-putting for anyone. So um, just wait until they are ready. They want to nurse. As long as you're not waiting until they're hangry, they will be calm enough to open up their mouth and they will latch on. After that, always check. Make sure their lips are flared out. This is a big one. I think a lot of people don't notice is when they're curled in like this, you're getting a lot. Well, first off, you're just not going to have enough of your nipple in their mouth. And so you're not going to have a deep latch which means you're not going to efficiently be breastfeeding. You're going to get like a fraction of the milk that they need in that feeding. And that causes one fussy baby. But also that friction is going to be going on your skin on a very sensitive area over and over and over again. And that's where you're getting those cracked nipples, which you do not want. You do not you want to avoid that at all costs. Um, I had to deal with a little bit of irritation from that with my first baby. And I realized very quickly, it was like, it is raw right there. So I just switched positions and for a little while to let it heal. And that made it much better, but I was also very aware. So I always like flare the lips out to make sure that it almost looks like fish lips. So making sure that they are not like tightly like gnawing at you because nobody wants that. Um, and then you listen, make sure that they're gulping, that it's transferring milk and you know you have a great latch. So tip number six, know how long a breastfeeding session should even last. Um, this can vary from baby to baby. And so on average, it's going to be 10 to 20 minutes. Um, and this could be just per side too. So my newborns, my, I remember the nurse saying, oh, he's a gourmet eater. That 
to them was when they like to just eat for a long time. They took their sweet time, but they're brand new and they're learning to breastfeed just like I was learning to breastfeed. And so I was patient with them and it was fine. But yeah, it was like 40 minutes total for my babies. And that was just normal and it was okay. So I knew that this time was how long the session would take, which was great because if you were trying to have family over to go to come see your newborn, now you know, okay, so they typically like to eat, you know, every two to three hours. So if they get here, I have to know that I'm going to step aside if that's what's going to make you feel more comfortable for 10, 20, or even for me, it was 40 minutes. So that will help you feel more comfortable knowing like, hey, this is normal for my baby to nurse this song. And I know that they're getting enough milk because this is their norm. That does take a little bit of patience, I know, um, because you are nursing what seems like around the clock. Next thing is knowing how often to breastfeed. So this is crucial. And I'm not somebody that loves schedules. I'm not somebody that has everything on a timer. And so I love to just kind of go with the flow. And babies don't necessarily love that. So that also causes you to miss small cues. So always take a note. Say, hey, like I nurse, I started my nursing session at 12 o'clock. So now at three o'clock, I need to wake my baby to feed them because I need to go be nursing them every two to three hours from start to start. And some babies are going to want to nurse every two hours. Some want to nurse every three hours and that is okay, but do not go longer than three hours because that will affect your supply. Their baby can't gain enough weight and, um, they're going to get hangry and you're going to have one fussy baby on your hands and it's going to be really hard to latch. So just know like this is how long I'm going to be breastfeeding. Take note. I loved putting timers when I had three little ones under the age of four and I had that newborn. I had a timer to remind myself and it was the best breastfeeding relationship that I have had out of all of my kids because I never waited until she was crying and upset. I knew like, okay, I know she's sleeping right now and I don't like to wake a sleeping baby, but it has been three hours and I need to nurse her, which helped me have a completely abundant supply, which I loved. Number eight is check for signs that your baby's hungry. There are signs. There are so little because they're little themselves, but when you start noticing these little signs, you're like, gotcha. You're hungry. And so it really avoids a lot of frustration. So you're going to be looking for them putting their fists in their mouth. They're wanting to gnaw on something. They're probably hungry. If they are turning their head, like they're trying to look for something, they're looking for food. Where is mom? I want to eat. So check for that. There's like noises if they're making, rooting signs. Always check for those. And then that will help you know that your baby's hungry. So better to nurse them now before they start crying. Crying is the last sign saying, mom, I'm so hungry. Why aren't you feeding me? So do your best. Find those small little signs. That's when you should feed them, not when they're already crying. Number nine is try different breastfeeding positions. Like I said before, um, I was really raw on one side. And so even though I still wanted to nurse on both sides, because I wanted a good supply on both sides, I still could not hold my baby in the cradle position because that was the part that was raw. It was killing me. So I tried a different position and it was really helpful. Um, And not only that, every breastfeeding position is great for different situations. So maybe the cross cradle works better for you because you know, you want this hand free because you have another kid that you need to attend to, or maybe you want a sidelining position because you had a really long labor and sitting up for that long is really painful for you. Maybe you have a baby that is having a hard time with a deep latch. So having the lead back breastfeeding position is great for that. It's also the football hold, which is really great if you have extra like pretty large breasts. So this will help you get a good latch and your baby's not They're able to breathe. They're able to have their nose up all as well. So the main, those breastfeeding positions in total are the cradle hold, the cross cradle hold, the sideline pose, the laid back position, and the football hold. So those are five and I can completely go further detail in another live if you would like, but 
Um, my personal favorite is the cradle hold and the laid back hold. So those are what I always loved and I do pretty often when I'm nursing. It just depends on where I am and what I have to do at that time. My last tip is get comfortable. You are going to be nursing a lot. So you have to get comfortable. You don't want to be slouched over, looking down. You're going to have a ton of neck and back pain. And we're talking about sustainability. How long can you do this? Because you're going to be doing it for a long time. So you want to make sure that you have a breastfeeding chair that has you fully supported and maybe a lot of pillows. So those breastfeeding pillows that go around are really helpful. You can have some on the sides of your arm to hold your arm up, which will help hold your baby up. Um, you can also make sure that you have like a headrest so you can lean back and relax. Having a um, step stool is really great to relax, lift up your feet, and that'll put a lot of pressure off of you when you are maybe in a lot of pain from a long labor. So those are really helpful, but also just you yourself relaxing, taking a deep breath. If you're anxious, your body's not going to relax and let the milk flow in. So take a deep breath. If you're overwhelmed, go ask your partner or a friend or whoever's there to support you. And if you don't, set the baby down. It's okay. You're coming from a mom of three. They are okay. So take a, take a moment to yourself. Take a cleansing breath. Just relax. You've got this. And then you're able to nurse your baby. So relax. Put some nice relaxing music on. Listen to an audio book. Watch a show. Whatever it is you need to do. But go ahead and just get comfortable and enjoy that sweet time with your baby. One question I get a lot is how to tell if my baby is getting enough milk. So there are quite a few ways to do this. Um, one easy way is making sure that they are getting enough wet and soiled diapers. So when you have a newborn, that's going to be about six to eight wet diapers a day, three to four stools a day. That obviously depends on how many days old your baby is. And then as they get older, that'll change. So that just depends. Definitely look up how many days your baby is and how many soil diapers they should have. Um, if you are concerned and you're not getting enough soil diapers, there are so many things that you can do right there. So first off, go ahead and meet with your pediatrician, your lactation consultant. Another great way is to uh, have this baby scale and weigh your baby before and after a nursing. So this way, you know exactly like I started nursing and this baby weighed this much and now this much milk has transferred into them. So now they weigh this much more. So that is always very, very helpful tool that I like to be like, okay, I know my baby's getting enough milk because in this nursing session, and if you'd like to do it every nursing session, you totally can. That way you're able to document and write like, okay, I got, they had this many ounces in this nursing session. And if they are properly gaining enough weight, so every baby should be gaining weight every single week when they're newborns, they should be gaining four to seven ounces per week. So you can go to your doctor, your midwife, your chiropractor, or your scale at home and keep weighing them. That's why that was an easy way to know that they are gaining weight. That means they're getting enough milk, which is great. You go mama. And a couple of things to note when your milk does come in. So when does my milk come in? That comes in around days three and five after birth. I have noticed, I feel like it gets even sooner with each baby I have, but um, you actually have milk in you right now, even when you're pregnant. You can have it in the middle of your pregnancy. Your body knows to make breast milk, so it has already started. It is something called colostrum, and it's this very thick yellow liquid gold for your baby. So you're going to, that is like a very um, thick milk, and it's going to coat your baby's stomach and intestines. It is the best thing you can give to your baby. So it's going to have all nutrients and antibodies, and it will help help with the digestive tract and prevent your baby from getting infection. It is absolutely amazing. Flex. So the letdown reflex you will feel when your milk is coming in. So now you have that mature milk coming in, which happens between 
um, day five and the last, the first two weeks, you'll see it change into more mature milk. And that will be like a lot whiter. So it goes from like this rich gold milk. And now it's going to go into this white creamy milk. And it's going to be actually a lot thinner than the colostrum that was there. When that comes in, you have this letdown reflex. And some mamas do feel it and some mamas don't. I always feel it. It is pretty intense for me. It kind of feels like when your foot falls asleep and you have all those little tingly things all over your foot, except here. So you feel that really it's just for maybe a minute when your milk is letting down. And this is coming from either just hearing your baby cry or another baby cry, um, seeing your baby and time. So it's your body is now used to breastfeeding every three hours. And so, hey, it's time. You'll feel that reflex and be like, oh, it's time to nurse. Then, um, or obviously pumping or nursing will start the letdown reflex. So um, this can change for mama to mama. Some have very strong reflexes, um, letdown reflexes, and it can be very overwhelming for your baby. So if you are having a strong letdown reflex, there are multiple things that you can do to help with that and not choke your baby. So you can, once your letdown starts, take a break, put some pressure on, and it will regulate over time and your baby will be able to nurse more efficiently and be able to handle the letdown. It is totally fine. Um, or you can switch positions. So if you don't have gravity working with you, work against gravity. So if you're laying back, you're going to have um, gravity not working against you. You know what I mean? So don't be full of going forward, having it go down in them. You want them positioned up. So trying to lay back position will really help with a forceful letdown. Um, if you have a slow letdown and they're little impatient babies, then you can obviously use um, gravity to your favor. Lean, you know, have a side line, you can have a cradle hold, it's much easier. And then you can also use breast massage or you can use a breast massager and that'll help even warm um, hot packs will really help. And that'll help getting your milk flow. Some mamas also like to pump before and that'll help getting their milk flowing. It's totally up to you. Okay. I said last thing, but I can fit in one more thing. What happens if I'm sore? If my nipples are sore, they're cracked. This is important. Um, this is because of a poor latch. So first off, you got to fix the latch or else this is just going to happen again. Um, you're going to keep it wet. You do not want to dry it out. That's going to be a really rough way to heal them. So keep them wet. You could be with coconut milk. It could be nipple cream. It could be um, even your own breast milk. Those things will keep keep them wet. You want to keep changing breast pads. Let your um, change your bras often so nothing gets infected. Use ice packs and change the position for a while until it heals. You still want to nurse pump as often as as you should be to not affect your supply, but you still um, try the, try a different latch. Like I said, when I was nursing cradle hold, I switched to um, cross cradle hold, and that just created a different latch or no, it wasn't cross cradle. Sorry. It was like football hold. Cause then it's from going on this side. Now his head's going this way instead of this way on the same breast. So it was very helpful. So if you have sore nipples and you need some help there, first focus on that latch, get it fixed. If you need somebody go see a lactation consultant, meet with me, whatever you need, but get that fixed as soon as possible. Cause it can also affect your milk supply, but also keep it healed, keep it healing, keep changing it, changing so it doesn't get affected and change the nursing position in the meantime. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I will see you guys next week on the Early Motherhood Guide. Bye, guys. All right. Thanks for watching.